Hi everyone, Jim Thomas here, your ministry associate at the Christian Church of Northern California, Nevada. This video is all about doing your 2021 yearbook reports for your church. This particular year is the premier year of Alex, Data for Disciples, a new tool in which you can do your reporting. And because it's brand new, there's been some hiccups along the way, some challenges that people have to get through. And as a result, the general church has decided to extend the deadline from what would normally be March 15th to April 15th. So we still have a few days to get it done. So let's get to it. Let me share with you the page that we are going to be working with. Here's the page. Let me focus here on the address of the page. You'll see that it is https colon slash slash alex.disciples.org. And that will take you to this page here. This is this particular page is set up with, that remembers the username and password that I use. When you first go there, chances are it'll be blank. So the key information that you need to have at this point is your username, the email address that's being used by the general church to enable you to do these reports. Now, the general church has already sent out information. And if you don't have those email, the emails that were sent by the general church, check your spam folder, make sure that it can go there. Or it could be that the email address being used as a username is not one you have access to anymore. I have already sent you an email that has the username email address that's being used. So check that email, make sure that's an email that you have access to. Because if it is and you can't find your password, the forgot password will be the link that you need to use in order to get a new password. If it turns out that that email address is not an address that you have access to, you're going to need to reach out to Sherilyn Williams at the General Church and let her know that you need to have that changed. She's going to need from you the PIN, personal identification number, of your church, which I also have sent to you via email. So pull out that email so you can have those bits of information as you need it. Keeping in mind that Sherilyn is on East Coast time, so she will respond to your emails in early in the morning. Once you get that squared away and you're here and you're able to move forward, just simply click on the login. And this will take you to the dashboard for your church. And as you can see, I have some bits of information, which I'll explain what they are in a bit, but mostly take a look, make sure that your church information on this page is correct. You'll notice over here on the left, a series of possible buttons that you can click to do more. And if you want to know quickly what those look like, click on the hamburger menu here, and it will expand the menu to show you the different options. Now we'll go through each one of these, but the one that I wanna focus on right now is the My Yearbook, where you actually do the reporting of your yearbook information. Here is the yearbook record with the general information. Right now it shows staff, it shows some demographics and information about the church here. But notice up here in these different segments, these are different tabs that contain other information that you may want to look at that deal with your church. Now, if you've been submitting your reports on a regular basis, a lot of that information has already been populated, which will give you statistics that you may find helpful. So if you scan through this, you'll see that it gives statistics here on participants, on stewardship, demographics, and some other information. But what you want to do is you want to generate a report for this year. To do that, click on Update Entry. That's this button over here. Now this will take you to a page that has a number of fields that you can use to make whatever changes that are necessary. This is the general tab that I'm at right now. You will notice that some of the fields 
will not allow you to change. Those are hard coded, so you don't have to worry about those. You will find a couple of fields like this one in particular, which may not make any sense to you. In this particular instance, the district area is no longer a thing, but it was at the development of this program, so that's why it's here. So you can ignore that. Be sure to go into each of the tabs and check to make sure that the information here is accurate. You can click into any field and make whatever changes that you think are necessary to make it accurate. Participant stats. This is sort of important for a number of different reasons, but it has always been a source of confusion. For now, on the participants, we're talking about the people who have participated somehow or, or another in your church by participating in a ministry or participating in, in an offering or what have you. I have an error that popped up on my screen. Not sure why that happens. What I've noticed that if I click away, it doesn't change anything and I'm able to go ahead and make my submissions anyway. So if that happens, don't let it scare you. Click OK and continue to move forward. Uh, so here's total membership, stewardship. There are certain areas that are right, are read only because of the fact that that information has already been reported from the region to the general church, so that's there. But it gives you also a chance to indicate other funds that your church has collected that you may certainly have devoted to other ministries. Here is our uh, the, the property page. It only asks a couple of questions. Do you own, rent, borrow? And then if so, what sort of liabilities do you still have uh, regarding your finance of the church? Down in the bottom section is ADA CDA compliance, and that deals with the, ac the handicap access to your sanctuary and other areas of your church. And you can let us know, let the church, general church know whether you are ADA CDA compliant and whether or not you would like to get information on how to become ADA CDA compliant if you currently are not. So in this section here, it talks about the number of people that are involved in various ministries. The demographics is pretty straightforward, but the thing that, that you may miss on this is that the numbers that you're putting in are not the number of people that you have in your church that fall on any given category. What this is, is a percentage of that category. And depending upon how big or small your church is, the percentages are going to have some margin of error as you try to calculate it. So do the best you can. And notice that in this section here, the total ent entered says 100 because that's how I made the numbers work. When I initially did the calculations and figured out these number of people divided by the total number of members is equal to this percentage, it was a percentage dot something or another which when added together didn't give me quite 100 because of that margin of error. So what I needed to do is increase or decrease certain areas by one or two in order to make it come out to 100. Get as close as you can with this and you'll be fine. Other typically has a series of questions that the church is interested in dealing with your church. At times I've seen this be as many as 12 different questions. In this particular case, there are only three. This section will change year by year. Finally, feedback. Right now the page talks about feedback about your church, such as what new ministry or mission did you begin or what the top three community concerns that you have. And that's great if you, if you have that information to put in there, but if you have specific questions or concerns about the information you put in there, put that under category three so that the, so the people at the general church say, oh, well, you're having problems with this. You can also, again, write to Cheryl and she'll be pleased to hear from you and she'll be quick in answering your questions. Finally, the, the most important one is the submit. Here, you need to put in your full name. You can throw in your phone number or your email as an option, but not necessary. Put your full name and then click Submit. This will then go into a queue where I will take a moment to review. The information that you put in is good. And I can just take it, verify it, and send it on. Make sure that they get it.
Let's take a look at some of these other options that you have here. The home option takes you back to the opening screen that you originally went to. The congregation directory enables you to get specific information, you know, contact information, location of the different churches that are in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. It has a good search function so you can find the church by name, city, region, or a combination of the three. We've done the My Yearbook section. Here is the weekly recording. This enables you to, at minimal, once a week, come in and do, re do your reports. This includes the attendance as well as the giving, and then you can add notes. Now, I put in a couple of sample pieces of data. This is stuff that I'm going to <laughs> remove before, you know, before I have this thing submitted. But I wanted to get a couple of things in there so you can see what it looks like. And to add an entry, you just click on the green button, and there's only a couple of questions, such as put in the date, and let's say I wanted to go in to March, let's say 21, and let's say I had 102 people attend. I'm just going to say this is a test, and let's say from there I got our church pulled in $12,000 in the weekly giving. And once that's done, all I have to do is click on the Save button. I get this box that tells me that it has been submitted. And now you can see that I now have three different entries in here. If you do this every week, then at the end, of the, when it comes time to do your yearly reporting, most of that information is already saved for you. And then it's just an easy matter of just viewing the information, make sure it's all there, and then clicking Submit to get it sent out. Some churches may not have the personnel to stay on top of this on a weekly basis, so maybe you're going to do it maybe once a month or maybe once a quarter. Again, the whole purpose of doing this is to make sure that you have all this information ready at your fingertips when it comes time to submit your report. When you do all of this, you can see what it looks like by clicking on, say, in this case, the attendance window. And you can see the attendance. We had started off with our 100 some odd people, went up to 100, almost 120, and then back down to just under 100 in the, in the span of three weeks here. Now notice that the time frame I could select. So if I wanted to see what it is over the current month, this shows me April and there is a red dot here in the middle that shows me where everything is at. If I wanted to take a look at it over the last three months, notice that it goes from March 22nd to April 3rd. Not quite three months of data, but that's because I don't have three months of data in here. So at some point or another, if you are good at, at keeping up with this, at some point you will be able to see better statistics because you'll have data that, that spans over a period of time. Same thing with the giving. And then the settings tab allows you to make changes, such as changing the username if you think that needs to be changed, uh, including the full name of the person that is going to be submitting the information. And then, of course, changing your password if you feel the need to change your password. The help will take you to the Alex information page, which has information and tutorials that you can take a look at. And then finally, there is the logout. When you click on the logout, of course, it's going to log you out. And if you're like me and you keep your passwords saved in the browser, then you don't have to worry about looking up your password the next time you go through. So that's it. That's all you really need to know for Alex. And whether you keep it up to date on a regular basis or not is up to you. But every year, you'll be asked to go in here and submit your yearbook reports for your church to be done by March 15th. If you have any questions, remember you can give me a call, send me an email. I'm here to help. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this has helped you. We'll see you around.